throughout Grapefruit League play, and that's why he's with the big club. That ball hammered, and we have a tie game. And after watching this kid in batting practice and that swing right there, it will not be nearly the last. 1 0. Hit hard to right field, a base hit. Bobby Abreu up with it and fires back in, but Albert Pujols aboard, and that is now a 30 game hit streak. Here's the pitch on the way, swung on and a high drive to deep left center, and kiss it goodbye, and hello, number 200. The field very deep again. This ball hit deep to left. It's got a chance to the track, to the wall. Albert does it again. Pujols has beaten. And Albert Pujols hits one into deep right field, back at the wall, and is gone. Two-run shot, Albert Pujols with first base open. The Tigers pitch to the MVP. That is hammered into left. That ball is absolutely murdered. Crushed by Pujols. center field. Back at the track, he's got another. And more respect. He wants that four inch two home runs. And he hits me, and here goes one in the left. How about three on the night in a row? Oh, what a pull. In the air, left field, and pulls is given St. Louis the lead. A dramatic, towering three run home run. Disbelief here in Houston. A single by Eckstein, a walk to Edmonds, and how about Albert Pools? He got the slider, but it was not a good slider. Hey guys, what is going on? This is Cardinal Bird 5, and today I have a player review for you guys. We're going to be finally talking about the prime Albert Pools. Now, <clears throat> Most of you know, to obtain this card, you have to get level 50 in Rizzo's store, and then you have to get 5,500 tickets. Um, and let me tell you guys, it's definitely a grind. It, it takes forever, so hopefully you saved up some tickets and obtained him. Anyways, let's go ahead and start talking about the card. Now, he can only play first base. His hitting is remarkable. 94-94 versus righties, 99-97 versus lefties, 96 vision, 95 discipline, 90 clutch. Pretty much, you know, 90 plus in all the hitting except bunting. Uh, and the fielding, fielding's really good too. 85 fielding, 68 reaction is. If there was one downside of the card, it's probably the reaction and the speed. Although I really haven't noticed the reaction being a problem really at all. Um, but he has decent speed for a first baseman, 47 speed, which is not bad. Now, I mean, next we're gonna get into batting practice um, and talk about his stance. I might even show you guys some fielding as well. But I do just want to throw this out there. If you guys are contemplating of getting full holes and you have a slow bat and you rely on hitting um, opposite handed like you know lefties on righties right on lefties I don't know if I would get this I don't know if I would get this card I'm just throwing out there if you have a quick bat and you hit well with players and you like to use a lot, a lot of right handed batters um, you should probably definitely get this card if you're looking for a first baseman there's really no I mean this is by far the best first baseman in the game uh, attribute wise but if you don't hit well with Beltre you know, Arenado, Beltre is a really good comparison in my, in my opinion. If you don't hit well with that card, um, you might want to get Seaver or you might want to try to get Ted Williams. Um, this card might not be for you. But let's go ahead and get into batting practice and show you guys a few tips. Alright guys, so we're in practice. I do want to show you guys a few things before we actually start talking about um, approach and whatnot with pools. I do want to show you guys the stance, so we'll get out of the strike zone camera really quick just to show you guys whatever camera you guys... See, the problem is I don't like any of these other cameras. They used to have some good zoom cameras, they took them all out, but we'll just show you guys the regular zoom. This is what a stance looks like. Uh, so if you don't use the strike zone cam for whatever reason, aesthetics, um, you like seeing... I don't know. You like seeing the runners, I don't know. I really don't find any other advantage of not using strike zone unless you like extended offset zoom. Or I'll set zoom to give you more, you know, depth perception and the focus point inside part of the plate. But that's another story for another time. Uh, anyways, this is what full stance looks like. So if it's bothering you, 
um, and you, you refuse to switch cameras. Maybe this isn't the card for you. We'll go ahead and go back to my personal favorite stri strike zone cam. And then we're going to start talking about facing Roddy on Roddy. Now, yes, Pool Wolves does have a shift. Unfortunately, they do not illustrate that in practice mode, but you guys will see that in my clips. But first, I want to talk about ways to avoid hitting with the shift. Uh, so, obviously, if you have runners on, you don't have to worry about the stupid shift. So, what you want to do is you want to bat Pool Wolves behind your highest on base guy, whatever guy you hit the best with, you know, whether that's your creative guy, Corey Seager, Sin Chu Chu, whoever that may be. I personally like to bat Albert in the three hole. I like to bat my creative guy in the two hole. I think the two hole is the most important position in a batting lineup. And I like to do righty lefty, righty lefty. So it works out for me. Um, I like batting Albert third. I don't necessarily think that's the best place for your best player. But in my case, my lineup, most people's lineup in Diamond Dynasty is so stacked. Uh, I think righty lefty is the most important thing, but again, make sure you guys are putting your best on base guy in front of Albert. So if you have guys that you're getting on base, by the way, there's a bomb with Albert right there. Nice little, that was interesting. I've never seen that. But yeah, if you have a guy that gets on base, you know, 40% of the time, then you don't got to worry about the shift too much. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and start talking about righty on righty. And let's just assume the shift is on. Again, it's not actually on, but I'm going to just assume it is. Now I want to talk about their approach. If nobody's on and the shift is on, you want to be really patient with Albert. Uh, you want to do one of two things. You want to be really patient at first, especially the first AB. If nobody's on, there's two outs in the first. Just see how they want to attack Albert. Um, and if they want to, you know, throw you away, all right, then what you want to do is you want to adjust and you want to look to go away. You know, take the first strike, see how they want to pitch you. But if you notice that they are challenging you a lot just because the shift is on, whether it's fastballs inside, sliders inside, we'll start setting inside and try to swing early. You might hit into the shift a few times, but if you get a hold of one, that sucker is gone. So, you know, that's definitely a risk you should be willing to take. However, if they're just pitching you away, 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 guys, just go with it. So I'll give you guys a few examples. Um, of course, we're going to go to back control, actually, for this to illustrate my point a little bit better. And I want to show you guys, if you guys watch my lefty on lefty, I like to hit like that righty on righty as a little cool in Beltre. But the opposite field, I just like to keep my PCI maybe slightly up on early there, but slightly about right in here with my thumb all the way on top of the analog with good grip, pushing down on it like medium sensitivity. So let's see if we can get an opposite field hit here. See if they throw me away. Okay, so I like to start it about right here. And what you do is you want to get on top of the ball, see the pitch out of his hand, try to be late. All right, though that's dead center. Not dead center, but like left center. So I didn't go with it all the way, but... You guys are getting my point. You want to try to get on. You try to go with a pitch if they're pitching you away. And if they pitch you in, I like to hold it all the way in like this and just crush it. I mean, that's what you know. You don't. It doesn't matter if there's a shift on. No one's gonna catch that. It's almost in Big Mac land. So let's show you another one, middle in. I'm not gonna talk about lefties too much, but mainly righty on righty. That seems to be the biggest problem for people. Lefty on righty. He. Cr I mean, he crushes lefties. So I would just keep your piece right in the middle, react righty on righty go with that pitch right there. I don't know if that's going to go, but that was a good hit. We're all, I think we're also playing Hall of Famer Legend. That was pretty much almost a center green. And again, if you're setting up inside, nobody's on, and they're challenging you, hit it. Go with it. I mean, nobody's catching that crap. So, yes, you'll get out a few more times by the shit, but you also get a few more hits. Don't stress over it too much. It's not as... Ooh, that's crushed. That's another way to beat the shit. Go with it. Don't worry too much about the shit, guys. It's not as... Uh, exaggerated as uh, left-handed batters are, such as the fielder, and pulls in pretty well, such as the fielder, uh, Rizzo. It's not as big of a deal. Um, I, I don't know. Dang it. But look how full this is crushing. So, basically, in summary, guys, don't worry too much about the ship, and just look for how they're trying to pitch you and adjust. Don't don't try to hit against the shift every single time. That's my point. Next, we're gonna get into some gameplay clips. And uh, I'll show you guys some examples of the shift, um, hitting your runners in scoring position and whatnot. So stay tuned for some gameplay clips. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some gameplay. Now this is one game I was recording and it got cut off. Albert actually had three home runs this game, and this was one of them. Uh, at this point, we are up big, but I just wanted to show you guys, you know, even when the shift's on, even though if you're up a lot, get, um, you know, start picking up your opponent's tendencies. And I noticed, you know, he was trying to throw me a lot of soft stuff inside, trying to mix it up. 
So at this point, I was just setting inside, especially with two strikes. So you can see there, he tries to throw that sweeping curve. He was trying to front door it. So at this point, again, I'm still trying to pull the pitch inside, and I'm trying to hit it hard. Throws me a hanging curveball, and I crush it. I mean, that's just an example of picking up your opponent's tendencies and adjusting. Regardless if the shift is on or not, he's still going to hit bombs, so it doesn't really even matter. Like I said, yeah, you'll get out a few more times because of the shift, but it's up to you to adjust. Now, this is a good example. Um, you get nobody on. This is how you make adjustments and you beat the shift. You see how my opponent's trying to pitch me. He's trying to pitch me away. 2-0 count. There's no reason to be super aggressive. Uh, you know, we had nobody on. Just go ahead and see some pitches. He tries to challenge me there, but it's too far inside. 3-0 count. I'm going to go ahead and see a few more pitches. A lot of people pitch around Albert as well. Finally, throws me a sinker middle in. 3-1 count again. All right, a 3-1 count. And then he throws me another slider down and away. I'm not going to swing at that 3-1. That's not the pitch I want. And then full count. What are we going to get? Another pitch away. So, like I said, if people want to pitch around you, go ahead and let them and take your walks. It's not that big of a deal. And if they're going to challenge you, be ready to hit it. Now, this is another example of the same game. Challenges me there. Again, I'm still taking. I'm being patient, seeing how he wants to pitch me this AB. Next pitch. Throws me a breaking ball away, and I'm ready for it this time. And I, you know, hit it pretty much uh, to where the second baseman would be at or up the middle a little bit, I guess. And it does beat the shift. Same game again. Uh, this time we have two on. And nobody down. So, like I said, this is the best, you know, this is the best way to beat the shift is don't have to worry about the shift. Um, we still third there. So, first and third. I'm trying to, you know, find a pitch I can drive. 1-1 one, one count. Throws me a good pitch slider on the, you know, slider on the hands. We are facing uh, Chapman at this point. So, it, this is a tough AB. But, like I said, pull his crush his lefties. Starting right PCI. I cheated a little bit right here because it is Chapman. He throws me a high fastball. See how he wants to pitch me 2-2. Two, two. Is he going to challenge me? He's going to throw me a changeup low. We're all over it. So at this point, you're facing Chapman. You, you kind of have to just guess. And we get a changeup away. And we do hit it hard, but it's right at him. I just wanted to show that AB. It was a hard hit ball, but it was right at him. All right, here we go again. Uh, again, don't throw about the shift. We got to run around first. We're trying to you know, protect middle in here. We're trying to drive the ball. Um, see how he wants to pitch me again. Throws me a slider away, and that's just the pull hit there. If the shift was on, you would have been out, but since there is no shift, we do get a base hit. So that's just an example of, you know, if you have somebody on, you don't got to worry about that garbage. And here's another example of Pulse's raw power. That was like a fastball down and away, and I still pulled it off the wall and showcased his speed a little bit as he does get a double there. And finally, uh, this was a game I made my opponent quit really quickly. He started off with a high change up there. A lot of people try to, they try to throw you the weirdest stuff. Like you'll hardly ever get fastballs middle in, middle in, unless you show your opponent you just simply cannot hit the pitch. And that's on you guys. If You gotta have to make that adjustment and hit those inside pitches. Uh, but I notice a lot of people like to pitch pull holes. They like to throw them soft inside, um, whether there's people on or not. And here we just get a hanging pitch uh, pretty much middle in or low in and we just crush it. And it made my opponent quit the game there. And finally, we have one last AB. Now, this is actually Albert's first hit, and this is off Kershaw. Um, at this point, I was trying to just go with the pitch, trying to stay back. A lot of people don't try to challenge me, but if they are, again, it's up to you to make that adjustment. But here, he's been throwing me a lot of stuff middle way, so we go with it, keep my PCI pretty much centered on. And, uh, yeah, we just get on top of the ball, and be a little bit late, and we hit it down the line. So that's just how good pools is. Um, overall, guys, I think this is a great card. Uh, but like I said, if you hit well with Rizzo, or you already have a Rizzo, you already have a Votto, you already have your filter, um, in my opinion, there's really no need to go get this card if that's how you know you want to spend your tickets. For me personally, I love this card, and it's a perfect fit for my lineup. You know, it gives a lot of good protection from for Maurer and Jacoby, my other left-handed hitter. So to me, it's a perfect match. Plus, I just love pools. But ultimately, it's on you. I think this is the best first baseman in the game. But like I said, if you struggle with Beltre or similar players like that, you know, you might want to use your tickets elsewhere. Thanks for watching the review, guys. This is card number five. Signing out. Peace.